The Russian proverb says, no matter how you say the word halva, it's not sweet in the mouth. No matter how you say the words new worldview standard, it's not sweet in my head. A communal initiative group of engineers, biologists, economists, mathematicians, philosophers, and specialists from other industries, starting in 1987, worked together to create a complete holistic system of methodological knowledge, which is a sufficient methodological basis for solving accumulated problems with the least collateral damage in the transition period. This system is called the conception of social safety. The conception of social safety, hereinafter referred to as CSS or KOB, the original Russian acronym, is a system of views on the world order, which has its own terminological apparatus and its own philosophical basis. Through consideration of the evolution of the biosphere and humanity, the global historical process, economics, philosophy, sociology, and a range of other disciplines and sciences, CSS, through the theory of governance, came to an understanding of the processes occurring in the modern world, the origins of the global system crisis on planet Earth, and demonstrates the ways of withdrawal of all mankind, including each individual person, from these processes towards the path of crisis-free, harmonious development, in harmony with the laws of the universe, biosphere, and nature. The main works of the CSS were written by a collective of authors who took the collaborative nickname of the Internal Predictor of the USSR, which began its activities in the 80s and 90s of last century. The CSS is both the idea of building a truly worthy title of human in a previous society and a specific distinct understanding of the world order, which brings this idea to life. At its core, CSS is a holistic and comprehensive system of knowledge about life in which the worldview systems, ideologies, creeds, religions are analyzed. The following has been designed and developed. Methodology of cognition and creativity, a universal theory of governance referred to as sufficiently general in the sense of the universality of its application, abbreviated SGTG, or DOTU, the original Russian acronym, written for the first time in the history of mankind and expressed in strict lexical forms in a harmonious and coherent manner. SGTG is an applied theory of governance applicable to all processes in the universe without any exceptions. Priorities of the means for governing countries and peoples. The concept of conceptual power, which determines ideological, legislative, executive, and judicial investigative authorities. The concept of the law of time, changing the logic of social behavior of people from the second half of the 20th century, which is characterized by rapidly increasing pressure of the information environment on a person. This pressure can only be reflected by methodology and the sufficiently general theory of governance. A systematic view of theology, philosophy, psychology, sociology, pedagogy, economics, linguistics, the global historical process and the place of different countries in it, cultures of personal development and other related topics are outlined. To date, over 50 books and more than 300 analytical notes on a wide variety of socially significant topics have been published in the Russian language. The author collective of the USSR Internal Predictor publishes their materials anonymously so as not to distract readers from considering the essence of the information presented based on the personalities of the authors and not to create authority. And also, so that the reader can, without psychological pressure on his sovest caused by the names, make sense of what he reads and correct the errors identified. After all, the result of the matter is important, not the personalities. The USSR internal predictor is engaged in self-education and enlightenment, promoting the self-education of others. With this, self-education and personal development 
all people without exception should engage themselves throughout their entire lives regardless of their cultural, national, religious, gender, professional and any other affiliation. Everything else, including conceptual power, the highest power in society, are the effects that accompany this activity. By and large, the internal predictor of the USSR came to understand the tree of knowledge, which consists of three main parts. The root of the tree. This is the philosophical and worldview prism of the trinity of matter, information and measure. The trunk of the tree. This is the sufficiently general theory of governance. The crown of the tree. This is the CSS itself. What is the philosophical and worldview prism of the trinity of matter, information and measure? This is a basic, comprehensive, all-encompassing view of the world on the basis of maximally general categories of being, which allows you to find connections between processes, sometimes quite distant from each other, and considered in the current culture to be in no way connected and independent from each other. The sufficiently general theory of governance is a theory that naturally follows from the contemplation and reviewing of the universe through the philosophical prism of the trinity of matter, information and measure. By and large, this is a set of laws of the universe that describes all kinds of processes flowing in their interconnectedness and constituting one interconnected whole. All processes and phenomena in the universe can be considered from the point of view of governance. Processes flowing outside of governance simply do not exist. Governance in the universe is hierarchically ordered by levels, one of which is a person. Which means that a person's governance is always coordinated in one way or another with hierarchically higher levels of governance. And if a person's intentions are somehow inconsistent with the hierarchically higher levels of governance, then they are, by measure of inconsistency, not realized. By virtue of what has been said, the sufficiently general theory of governance is, in a sense, an empty descriptive form that is filled with content when a person encounters real processes. So, as a result of comprehending reality on the basis of the philosophical and worldview prism of the trinity of MIM, and on the basis of SGTG with a specific thematic orientation, CSS appears. Therefore, materials on CSS are always thematically defined and cover practically all the most important areas and issues in human life – psychology, sociology, economics, history, analysis of various ideologies and religions, analysis of the biography and psychology of historical figures, analysis of resonant films and literary works, and much, much more. A special, particular and essential component of the entire tree of knowledge is the relationship of man with the Creator and the Almighty, as the highest level of governance in the universe, so to say, the last instance. Through the prism of the worldview of the Trinity and through the theory of governance, it becomes scientifically obvious that there is a kind of supermundane reality that governs all the processes taking place in the universe. The supermundane reality is that objective phenomenon which is so blindly mythologized by modern religions and so vehemently denied by modern science, but which is objectively impossible to prove or to refute. Consequently, the question here is not about religious and confessional preferences, nor is the question of faith or non-faith in God, whether he exists or is the figment of the imagination of religious fanatics, here, the issue is about how to unconfessionally and unritualistically believe God in real life. That is, how to set up a dialogue with Him and meaningfully maintain it regardless of anything. CSS is not simply a new system of knowledge. It is, in its essence, a concept of nravious and ethical reprogramming of the whole society, starting with the individual which involves very specific spiritual work on one's own person. Moreover, 
This has nothing to do with any rituals nor any manner of spiritual practice such as gospel music, meditation, yoga, rosary, mantra chanting, tantric practices, qigong, tai chi, fasting, holotropic breathing, regression hypnosis, Catholic confession, any psychedelic drug including marijuana, DMT, ayahuasca, and so on and so forth. Far from it. We believe, for good reason, that the multitude of spiritual practices of all religious traditions of our time, at their core, are not only not working on oneself, but leading people away from real spiritual work on themselves, despite the fact that these practices may carry specific visual effects and spiritual relief. Corresponding to what has been said, supporters of CSS may truly work on themselves and dobra sovesly master the tree of knowledge, or imitate this process in different ways, including the aforementioned spiritual practices. For the first, CSS becomes an applied life wisdom, while for the second, CSS is another propaganda myth or system of knowledge of which there are countless numbers today, and which essentially does not oblige one towards true self-programming. What really happens to those who dobra sovesly work on themselves and master the tree of knowledge? When a person masters the philosophical prism of MIM, he becomes capable of reviewing the usual phenomena of life from a new, more perfect position, which allows him to consolidate previously scattered knowledge into a single mosaic picture of the world. It becomes clear in this world view that the universe is a process that flows as a complex, volumetric, multi-measured chain of cause-effect relationships stretching directly from pre-eternity, which means that the existence of the supermundane reality as the root cause of this chain ceases to be a matter of faith or no faith. And the question becomes, how to establish stable contact with the supermundane reality throughout life? And the life of such a person changes cardinally. So, for example, when a person passes from one passion to another, from one religion to another, from pursuing a career to pursuing Eastern spirituality and so on, this is the same as a child tiring of one toy and picking up another. So, in our case, a person simply ceases to be interested in toys in principle. He conceptually outgrows the current biblical concept and becomes conceptually masterful, which cannot be said for those who imitate. For them, CSS is another toy. Moreover, those imitating can even read all the CSS materials, know and remember them well, skillfully quote them, but continue to imitate CSS in real life. Often they find themselves attached to the terms of the original, strictly quoting from the text. They do not have intellectual and creative freedom of thinking, cognitating, philosophizing, visualizing and so on. Therefore it follows that they would definitely need an authority to point out and explain to them all the inaccuracies, incomprehensibilities and so on. CSS is among other things, a certain standard of human with a capital H, which everyone must achieve. Briefly, to become human means to have willpower and live under the strict dictatorship of Sovest, as the latter is the direct connection with God, or the last instance. In addition, on this basis, a person should be able to create new knowledge from scratch at the speed at which the need arises, to develop new, more viable opinions on his own or with someone as a practical need or cognitive uncertainty emerge, to be able to master new knowledge, to be able to study and to create in such a way that in the process, intellectual and creative potential are revealed. So, imitators are deprived of all of this and their number among the supporters of CSS is quite large. The choice of quote for the start of this video is perfectly connected with this and can be adapted to this topic as follows. No matter how much you speak the words of CSS or read it, neither in your mouth nor in your life will it become sweet. 
it is impossible to either buy a new spiritual standard, pass it on, donate it, sell it, or obtain it in some cunning way. It can be developed exclusively by independent spiritual work on oneself. Only then will it become sweet in life. The viewer may pose the question, why do I need to master and study this tree of knowledge? It is no secret to anyone that civilization on planet Earth is undergoing an acute crisis. It's also no surprise to say that the volume of information circulation in the world today is growing like an avalanche. And this is precisely what, according to the law of time, objectively accelerates the onset of the crisis and exposes all the problems of civilization, which are primarily of a nervous ethical nature. And if earlier the global crisis was not so obvious, to many it seemed something that didn't concern them personally, then the recent events related to the coronavirus have clearly shown that it can realistically affect each and every one. And many foresee that this is only the beginning. The informational tsunami creates a new environmental pressure on the human psyche, the likes of which mankind in his entire history has never before experienced. And in order to survive in a world of information avalanches and tsunamis, one should have a methodology of cognition that is not given in general education systems in any country in the world. Whereas the tree of knowledge, that is, the worldview of the trinity of matter, information, measure, the sufficiently general theory of governance, and the conception of social safety, precisely constitutes a new methodology of cognition that will help a person to independently comprehend what is happening both in his own inner world and on a global scale. Moreover, this is not advertising for CSS. This is not marketing. No one forces anyone since the mastering of CSS is a decision made of free will and no one has the right to impose anything on anyone. The authors of the CSS, as mentioned earlier, are a collective known as the Internal Predictor of the USSR, and they are not public, with the exception of three people. Vladimir Mikhailovich Zaznobin, who did a lot to create and distribute CSS around the world, he traveled around most of the globe, especially Asia, talked with the governments of many countries, in particular with the governments of Vietnam, China, Malaysia, and so on. Unfortunately, he is no longer with us. Viktor Alexeyevich Yefimov, who has done a lot to spread CSS, primarily in Russia and the CIS countries. For example, he lectured on CSS for FSB, known in English as FSS, formerly KGB, officers. In the recent past, he has begun to be pursued in Russia itself with the aim of provoking a mood of protest among the supporters of CSS. The case has not yet been closed, he is still being dragged through the courts. Vilichka Mikhail Viktorovich, who has done a lot in creating CSS materials and creating cycles of video lectures on its materials. We will translate, voice over and publish videos of these authors on our channel. As for Konstantin Pavlovich Petrov, who is also no longer with us, he is not one of the original authors of CSS but he was an active distributor of this knowledge among the population. His 20 lectures became legendary in the post-Soviet countries, and we decided to start by translating them, since General Petrov informs and explains in a quite simple language the main provisions of the tree of knowledge. After studying these lectures, it will be much easier to master the tree than without them. All CSS materials are written in the Russian language, so we are translating them into English, and as soon as the books are ready, we will publish them as well. In addition, the CSS itself is in constant development, which means it is not a dogma or a step-by-step -step instruction manual. In fact, everything that a person comes across in the CSS materials has always existed in the universe, just as the law of gravity existed before Newton discovered, named and studied it. Only before CSS, no one had yet systematized all this within the framework of a single holistic system. Therefore, CSS is only the key to self-education.
to self-development. CSS held parliamentary hearings on November 28, 1995, which were attended by the entire Russian political elite, who accepted the CSS at the legal legislative level and recognized it as the most powerful informational weapon to date. However, this informational weapon also requires a certain nervous and ethical development level and maturity, for which, it turned out, the entire ruling elite of Russia was not ready. Consequently, they did not popularize it, but at the same time, criticizing it publicly is dangerous for them. None of the political elite has been able to object, and can still not. And if the political elite begins to openly criticize the CSS, then the wind of history will rapidly blow these elite away, since their incapacity and all their lack of professionalism will be revealed in the disputes. So now in Russia, the political elite has chosen the strategy of silencing the CSS and, if possible, secretly using dirty tricks. You will hear little to nothing about it either on the radio, on federal television or from any other official sources. Moreover, the CSS book Dead Water was included in the list of extremist literature by the Lefortova court on November 20th, 2013. On February 8th, 2015, by the decision of the Kostinsky District Court of Sochi, another book of the internal predictor of the USSR, Liberalism is the Enemy of Freedom, was included. On April 24th, 2014, the Kostinsky District Court of Sochi added to the list of extremist literature another book of the USSR internal predictor, From Corporatism Under the Cover of Ideas to Subordinist, Under the Governance of God. On March 31, 2015, the same Sochi court included in the list of extremist literature the work of the internal predictor of the USSR, Towards the Governance of God. In other words, there is an active resistance against the officially legal, legitimate CSS by the same political elite. However, conceptual power in itself is not primarily the power of people, although it is expressed through specific people. It is autocratic. It is impossible to gain conceptual power for any money or bribes. One can only nerviously ethically, intellectually creatively and worldview philosophically grow and mature in this direction. But it is impossible to prohibit, censor, cancel, forbid, or limit in any other way.